All right, so this is the last video I'll do on this assignment, on assignment one. And at the end of this, I will save it, post it to Canvas. I'll even, if I have time, show you a little special effect that can help bring everything together at the end, right? But for now, I'm still cutting out my, my foreground, this little column. This little rocky outcropping. And I'm using the, the three pixel feather with my lasso to do it, to delete from it. I can do that same thing for the rock behind it because I love all of these textures and all these colors, but I also want the lines and things to make some sense. And remember, you can always just Option con con Command T, and you can always just reposition things too. And I can, I like distort a lot for placing things in settings. So even if it doesn't exactly match your sketch, you have the ability to transform and adjust things as you see fit. Now this element, command T, oh. there we go, option command T. I'm not actually sure it's all that necessary. My composition makes some good sense within its borders without it. And if you have five elements, Five clear elements, you don't necessarily need more. But I guess if I was to keep one, it would be this corner piece. And instead of having to go all the way to the top, uh, that's kind of cool. I don't know. I'm torn. Yeah, I think I'll keep it. All right. So... Now the difficulty is, how do I get this to match more with this? This is a much poorer quality reference. And if I use sponge and I saturate it, that might help a little bit, but it actually shows what's called the ISO markings from that photo because it was a photo done in low light. And so that doesn't look great. So instead, I can use these other direct adjustment tools, which are above Dodge, Burn, and Sponge. And these are the Sharpen and Blur tool. So Sharpen, same thing. I want a strength less than 20. I want a brush that's big and ironically soft. <laughs> but what this will do is it will detect variations within the pixels on that layer, and it will increase the contrast between them only where I click. So I'm going to do it right on the edges. And it's going to help bring that out a little bit. And it's okay because this is the foreground that we're looking past in my composition. And if I want to change its profile a little bit, like here, I can make it a little bit more surreal. Do a shape like that and cut it out.
All right. So now all that's left is kind of blending some of these edges, and I do that with my eraser. And I'm going to do it first at 100% opacity, and just, just like push at it a little bit, little dots. And then same thing here, blending it in. Just take out little bites at the hard edge, and then go to a lower opacity. Same thing, little bites to help mix those colors together. Bring some of those magentas in. Not too soft. Just little hints of it. Okay. And then I think this is the only color that just doesn't quite match. And I'm going to do what's called a uh, hue saturation adjustment. But I'm going to do it only within a certain range of color which is a pretty fun technique. Show this in just a second. Let me go ahead and reveal more of this. So you're just doing whatever your composition needs to make sense. Dodging, burning, sharpening. I feel like this highlight needs some burning down. A lot of these highlights need some burning. That will help it all to match in this foreground. But these yellows, just on this edge, if I want to push just those yellows, I can go to that layer, which also has the water and has all these blues I want to keep. And I can go to Image Adjustment Hue Saturation. But instead of the range being the master, which is all of the spectrum, I can say just yellows. And I can just isolate the yellows in that layer. And in this case, I want to desaturate those. Or maybe even shift them to a slightly different tone. A little bit more magenta in them. And now that all kind of matches a little bit better. So if I erase a little bit away from this stone, I can get away with the matching better. Okay, so that's kind of the most I could do with those references. And once I'm happy with it, I make sure all my corners are covered. So I'm looking at my guides. I've got good corners. Got no, like, holes. I could always extend my borders a little bit if I wanted to. If I think I've got the pixels for it. I think I could even extend it back to here if I just change this shape a little. So I'm going to distort it. Just tuck this back. There we go. Might as well have a bigger reference to use. Oh. Command T. Option Command T. So again, distort's very helpful to like making perspectives match. Okay, so something like that. And then over here, I can't really go any further to the right because of this reference, and I like that. Can I go a little bit taller? Barely. Just a little bit. So that's 
the ceiling on my cave, basically. Can I go any lower? Hmm. A little bit. Let's see, what if I stretch this one? So these transform tools, very, very helpful. Option, Command-T, and distort. Stretch it down. Yeah, that works. Let's move this a little bit down. And then I need to clean this up. So you're like just checking all your edges, getting the most out of it, kind of blending right to them. Option, Command, T, just stretch this lower. All right, there we go. Okay, so once you have your composition, maybe I want to sharpen it a little bit. It's that edge. It's those pixels. Okay, now I'm going to crop it using that crop tool. And I go all the way to my guides, and my crop tool will snap to my guides. And then I hit return. And then command semicolon, and I see my finished composition. But I want to get off the crop tool right away. So then I hit command S, I save it. And I see that that saves where I expect it. And then there's one last thing. Make it work even more believably. Besides fixing the sky, which looks as boring as anything right now. But that's called a texture overlay. So if I go to Pixabay and I look up mist, cloud, something like that. And I go past the sponsored content. A lot of you ended up using sponsored content. So you ended up with large images, but with watermarks all over it. You have to go past this sponsored bar. This is all the Creative Commons Cop, like uh, open copyright stuff. I'm going to take this big picture here, which is mostly clouds, right? I'm going to download it, large resolution. Oh, I can't without joining. So if I don't join, I can do second to largest. It's fine for texture overlay. I go back to photo P. And I'm going to take this from my downloads folder, put it into my assignment folder. This is what's called a texture overlay. They're usually grayscale, but I can use it to create atmosphere on my landscape. It's like glazing a painting. So I'm going to move that on top. It's on the very top layer. I'm going to stretch it, right? I can hold down shift, stretch it to cover my image. I'm going to rasterize it. Use my eraser with 100% opacity, soft, to get rid of this hard edge that's there. But everything else is pretty soft. And then I'm going to play with opacity and take that way down. So automatically I've missed, right? Now what's cool about this mist is I can use my eraser at lower opacities. And I can kind of customize it. So where would this mist gather? Well, mostly kind of in the foreground and maybe the sulfur pools above the water. But it would be clearer near, near the, the cave exit. I'm going to make this brush huge. And then just kind of, it's like clearing smoke from your kitchen. We can kind of push and pull it in different ways. Now, the really cool thing about this texture overlay is that I can also give it color. And so this I can do with image adjustment hue saturation. And because it's grayscale, I have to click on colorize. But if I colorize it, then I can really play with how saturated it is and what color it is. So let's see what fits. This is like a glazing on my painting, right? Do I want it to go more purple? Do I want it to go more blue?